What we've got here is how you see what's happening inside your PLC. Okay? Your cable that you've got that comes in here, this is an RJ45. This is not a Cat5 cable. This does not plug into your Ethernet port on your laptop. Okay? It just so happens they use an RJ45, but it's not Ethernet. They're using RS-45 serial communication here. Yeah. You open up this little flap on your, on your PLC and it plugs in right there. The other end plugs into the serial port on your computer. If you don't have a serial port on your computer, you can get a real cheap $10, $12 USB to serial adapter. USB to RS-232 adapter and that will allow you to plug this device into your computer. Okay? Now, directly above that are two little adjustment pots. You can get a small little right in here. Okay? You can get a small little trim pot adjusting tool and change those up and down. Those are two analog inputs, built-in analog inputs that you can use as set points for the PLC. We'll be talking about that when we get down to lab number eight. Okay? But we talk about analog inputs and what analog inputs are. Okay? Above that is a little silver switch. Okay? That's your run stop switch. Make sure it's in the run position. It's amazing how many emails I get. I downloaded it, it won't go, it won't go, it won't go. Oh, flip the switch into run. You've got run or stop. The nice part about the stop position is, okay, you throw it to stop and all the outputs shut off. Okay? This PLC has a program in it, so when we first fired it up, everything turns on. If you need to work on a machine, it's one way to shut things down is by putting it into the stop mode. Okay? Now, the next part over. You've got another connector here, and that's for networking the PLCs together. We won't be working on that, okay? Close that back up. The next one over is for a battery pack and a real-time clock. Those are options you can get to plug in here, and they go into that little module, okay? But again, we're going to leave those empty. I'm going to put this back on right. Okay? Now, up at the top, you flip this down, and there's all your terminals for your inputs. Okay? And you look across the top. Okay? Right over here, you have a 24 volt DC output. You can use that to provide a signal source for your inputs. Your wiring diagram showing how to do that. So you'll come out of here with your 24 volt DC and connect them up to your inputs. Each set of inputs has a common associated with it. That allows you to mix logic families. Maybe you have a bunch of 12 volt inputs, you have a bunch of 24 volt inputs, or 5 volt inputs. Maybe they have different commons or whatever. But by separating the commons out in here, allows you to have different voltage systems triggering your PLCs. Okay? And if you look here, you see I1, 2, 3, 4, common 1. I5, 6, 7, 8, common 2. A gap. And then I9, 10, 11, 12, C3, C3. Those two C3s are connected together. Okay? Then you've got I13, 14, 15, 16, C4, C4. Okay? I believe your PLCs go I1 through I8 with the corresponding commons. Okay? Now, down here on the bottom, you have your 120 volt to 240 volt AC input. Okay? You've got that connected up down here plus your system ground. First three terminals. Okay? Then you've got Q1, C1, V1. In this case, the first output is a DC output. Okay? In your case, with your PLC, it's a relay output. Okay? Then you come down to the relay outputs. Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, 
and C2. Again, these are grouped into, into put together in groups with their own individual commons so that you can mix voltage systems. If you look down on the bottom here, you'll see combinations of blue wires and red wires. The red wires are switching AC, 24 volts AC. The blue wires are switching 24 volts DC. You want to keep those separate. The PLC, with their separate commons, allow you to do that. Okay? And you've got this next group, Q6, C3. That's all by itself. Q7, C4, all by itself. Q8, C5, all by itself. Q9, C8, or C6, excuse me. Then you've got Q10, 11, 12, and C7. So this PLC gives you a lot of flexibility for turning things, changing things, different types of control systems. You can control AC, you can control DC, different voltage levels between AC and DC. Very flexible, okay? In your lab packet that you'll be getting when you log on to eZone, it'll have the connection diagrams on how to connect these all up, okay? Now, how do you know it's working right, okay? If you look over here in the corner, you'll see a series of lights. I'm going to go zoom in on those lights right now, okay? You see the red wires, the blue wires down there, all blue wires up on the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, now it's not focused. Oh, come on, give us some focus. Yeah, we'll pull it back, okay. That's better. That's better. There you go. Okay, hopefully you guys won't get too dizzy as I'm moving that camera around. We should have Dexter. Okay. Anyway, you'll see the inputs over here. Here's your inputs. And here's your outputs. If the light is on, that means the input is energized. Now remember I told you input 1 and 2 are normally open, right? So I'm going to push input one and you'll see the light go on and off okay push number two and you'll see light number two go on and off that's good now three and four were normally closed right mm -hmm. yeah so are they on right now They're on. okay so I'm gonna push it They're and on. it goes off okay I'm gonna push the other one They're it goes on. off now input five okay is input five changing Five and, five, and five and ten, because this has a double contact block on it. You've got a normally open connected to five and a normally closed connected to ten. Okay? So it's energizing and de-energizing. Okay? Now, six, normally closed limit switch. Seven, normally closed limit switch, right? Yeah. Okay? Now, we've got some overloads in there. I can trigger those, but it shows you the same way. Okay, if it's on, if the input is energized, the light will be on. Okay, now if you look in here, you'll see your outputs. Okay, what outputs are on right now? Looks like outputs two, four, and five. Okay, so that's turning on these lights up here. Okay, you got a light, light, light. Okay, got some lights on there. Okay. Now, if I hit the stop button, or the stop switch, okay, you can see all of the outputs went off here. Yes. Okay, but it still reflects what the state is of the inputs. Okay. You can hear the contactor open up when I hit stop. Those lights up there went off, okay? But you can still test all your inputs and see what's happening, okay? And that's frustrating for a lot of people because they'll be pushing their inputs and seeing them change, but nothing happens on the output, okay? So you go, I know it's working, I know it's connected, but nothing's happening, okay? Well, flip that switch over there to run. Okay, you throw it to the right, it's in the run position. Okay, I gotta figure out what's on here. It's 
causing this thing to fire up as soon as we turn it on. That's not yeah, good. That's not good. Okay. I don't know what somebody oh. programmed it last semester and, and left it in that position. Okay. <laughs> 